My name is Hugh Kierkegaard, and um, I have had the pleasure of being part of the, uh, the planning committee for this and the opportunity to work with Jennifer and an amazing group of people. I, uh, I wondered why I got chosen to lead this panel because um, I have had a lifetime of experience in the criminal justice system but um, have never really reflected a lot about uh, professionalism. So Jen said, oh, you can do it, you can do it. Um, uh, she said, you're a prison chaplain, you can, you can handle this. So I am a prison chaplain and I kind of, as I reflected on this, I, I straddle two professional worlds. One, as an ordained minister of religion, working in an interfaith context, and the other as a professional working in the multidisciplinary set setting of the correctional system here in Canada. So I'm most familiar with the challenges in, in that system, having spent much of my working life there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning something this afternoon about professionalism. We're all aware of the challenges facing professional endeavors these days, whether it's in the political realm, as we have seen dramatically in recent days in the United Kingdom. How do you spell Brexit? Or in a variety of medical and dental professions, or in other fields as diverse as law, engineering, and journalism, just to name a few. And of course, with a movie like Spotlight winning an Academy Award earlier this year, my own profession is not at all immune to professional challenges or in the case of that, uh, that film, uh, Scandals. From issues related to professional formation to addressing complaints of professional misconduct, it appears that at times the public has lost faith in professionals and in their regulatory bodies. In the worst cases, this has led to an erosion of public trust and cries for criminal sanction. The foundation of all professions historically was the concept of vocation, vocatio in the Latin, or a, a calling. It was associated with faith and a deep religious commitment. But it also represented a life committed to service of God and others, or in more secular expressions, the pursuit of the common good. Some would argue that the shift towards professions as careers devoid of such a vocational commitment, has fundamentally altered the DNA of contemporary professional life. Within professional groups, there have been calls for reform. Voices like that of John McKnight, whose critique of social work in the 1980s suggested that the professionalization of caring destroyed the capacity in communities to respond to human needs around them. And the eminent criminologist Niels Christie argued famously that the criminal justice system in its various modern professional guises stole the conflict from communities and people subsequently lost the capacity and resilience to deal with conflict. So it's not insignificant that both of these critiques of professionalism have been reflected in volunteer-based restorative approaches designed to recover community capacity to address criminal justice and other challenges to communities, which professional groups could not always address effectively on their own. So given all these stresses on contemporary professional practice, is it possible that restorative and relational approaches might provide a template for the broad renewal of professional formation, as well as reshaping the way in which professional bodies self-regulate? It is questions like these that our panel will address as they share their thoughts and experience with us this afternoon. And I should note that there's an overlap between the earlier workplace panel that we heard from today and this panel. Tomorrow the two streams will be merged and there will be kind of an integrated conversation, which I think is going to be very important. So I'm not going to formally introduce each panelist. Uh, their bios are in your program. I'll simply um, tell you who they are and invite them to come to the mic. So the first is Kate Morris, who's profession, or professor of social work at the University of Sheffield in Britain. And Kate will challenge our understanding of social work and in her own words will focus on social work regulation and the, 
the sorry tale of the UK experience. Um, secondly, we have Mary McNally from uh, the Faculty of Dentistry at Dalhousie, and she will discuss her involvement in the Dal Dental Restorative Justice process and, um, and discuss implications for professional standards coming out of that. Uh, Emma Halpern uh, is representing the Nova Scotia Barrister Society, and Emma will discuss the work of the society as they begin to adopt a restorative approach to regulating the legal practice here in, in Nova Scotia. And finally, uh, Paul Nixon uh, is the chief social worker uh, for New Zealand, and he will talk about how professional practice, staff selection, training and education, and quality assurance can all be shaped by a restorative approach. So I turn it over to... Kate.